Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art and today I want to talk to you about a color. Actually, it's a non-color, I think that some people say, and that's the color, watercolor black. Uh, we have been taught in schools never to use black and always to mix our blacks. That's what I was taught when I was in the American Academy. And so I want to show you a little bit something about that. And um, let me take you right to the tabletop and, understand, and let you understand what I have learned since I've been teaching now. Um, again, I had always been taught never to use black out of the tube. It always was a no-no and I, we always had to mix, mix our blacks with like a alizarin and like a phthalo blue or a phthalo green, all these dark colors to mix a black. And um, I went to a um, museum in, where was that museum? It was a museum, a Wyeth Museum. And I went and saw Andrew Wyeth and the first thing I saw was this Andrew Wyeth painting of blueberries. And basically it was black and blue. I would say it would be like ultramarine blue and like a, you know, like a lamp black or a ivory black. I'm not sure. I think he mixes his own blacks, but it made me realize is that, you know, hey, why, if Andrew Wyeth can use black from the tube, why can I not as a student um, not use a black? And so I started using black and I really enjoy using black now. And I've gotten some of the richest blacks I've ever find um, since I've started using just black right out of the tube. And so I want to just explain to you uh, why I'm using them and show you why it's a lot easier, I think, for a student to understand instead of mixing your blacks and trying to get to them to be solid black and really dark. And a lot of artists out there are using them right now. Um, just like the ultra neutral tints, the uh, ivory black, the lamp black, you know, there's all kinds of neutral tints. Now, what else is there? There's a um, Payne's gray. This is not more of a gray, but many of these artists, these famous artists are using grays and blacks now and using them mixed with colors. And so first off, let me just show you what some of the colors are. And so here I'm going to use, this is a peach black. And so if we just put a little peach black here, as you can see, it's very dark, right? And that's what we, we want to get when you're using black in there. And I can understand why the teachers want them to mix black so they're more colorful and not just dead color, you know, and um, a lot of people don't even consider it a color. And so here, this is called peach black and it's whole buying peach black. And so it's a pretty warm black, you know, because there are warm blacks, cool blacks. This is neutral tint. This is a neutral tint which is very dark too. You know, people think it's like, oh, well, that's a, you know, that's not a black. It's more of a gray neutral tint, but no, look, it's very much blue. It's a very bluish a neutral tint is a very blue black. And so then you see, you see the difference between the blue. It's very like, uh, it's almost got a purple in it, purple blue into that. And then I have um, lamp black. This is lamp black. And so lamp black right here. If you look and you put a little bit of water on it, you're going to see that it is a lot of, very warm. It's very warm, almost not a sepia, but it's a warmer, it's a warmer black, the lamp black. Then there's also, which I don't have with me, ivory black. And that's also a little bit more, I think, I think a little bit warmer in, in aspects of that, the effect of warm and cool blacks, but that all considered, you know, um, I like using peach black because it's almost seems like a solid, solid black where it's not too warm and not too cool. I just feel it's right in the middle. So this is that's what this is in the middle here. And if I pull it through, I feel like it's just a black black with no additive of warm or cool and just very gray like. And so that's peach black. And I consider that to be my favorite black. So that's the one I use mostly. But now that's saying that all. Um, and everybody still to this day, some students come in after been, being in other classes and saying, you know, Dave, I've been taught to mix all my blacks and so they're much more colorful. Well, that's a fine thing. And I, and I, <laughs> I had to do the same thing when I was in school. But what I want you to understand is that it's a lot easier and I do this myself now and I've got some of the richest, most colorful blacks I've ever gotten. I did one scene of the Vatican one time, a night scene, and boy, it was the richest. All I used was lamp or um, peach black peach black, which is this one right here in the middle. I used peach black and I used ultramarine blue. And man, I had got some most rich blue transparent sky I've ever gotten. And I couldn't have mixed that just with black and red. And because when you put the alizarin in there, you put the phthalo green, you're not getting a true, true black. You're getting, you're getting a color, colorful blacks. And that's way okay if you want a colorful black. But it, let's say you just want a really strong, strong blue black. So let me just show you. So I'm just going to mix, I'm going to mix my 
peach black. And so I'm going to put down here, I'm just going to put out the peach black. No, no really color into that. And we are programmed when we go to schools and I for the longest time did not use and always mixed all my blacks until I went to see that show of Andrew Wyeth and I saw that he used. Now that's very transparent. You can see and you see the white. And when this dries, it'll be about 20% lighter than that. So when you're using black and you want to cover up the white, just like when you're using black paper and you want to cover up with white paint, it has to be pretty thick. It's almost opaque, you know, because you really have to use enough pigment to cover up the white. And it's still going to look transparent if you put a lot in there, but it has to float in the water. So let's say we wanted the color to be more rich, though. We don't want it to just be solid black. We want it to be more of an ultramarine blue. Let's see what color I have here. And so I'm going to mix this on this board here. I'm going to take, where's my ultramarine blue? Actually, this is ultramarine blue right here. So I'm going to mix that together, this blue and this black together. And I'm going to kind of make it as thick as I can at first, really thick. And so I'm going to put this into this wash and it's going to feel basically black. And you're going to see mostly just black on your screen. You're not going to see the blue that I put in there because it's going to be so dark. It's almost void of, of light. And that's what you sometimes need if you want to do a wash that's very transparent. It's transparent. You can barely see through it, but it's, and it's going to be really dark. Now let me just show you what happens when I put a little water on the one side and get a gradation. And so what I'm going to do is get a gradation here and you're going to see that it's going to turn that blue is not going to come forward. Now you're going to see a little bit of the blue come out. See how the little blue is in there. It's in there. You don't really notice it because it is so dark a value, but when you start making it lighter, look at all that blue in there. And so that blue is, or that black is not just solid black, even though that's what it looks like. It has a tinge of the blue in there, which just, when it's transparent, usually just put it out in water. And this is very thick, but if you, you kind of can't see it, but when it dries, you'll see a little glimming, glimmery feel of the, of the paper behind it. Even though it's really, really dark, you can see the pigment. It's almost floating there. Now let's put some red in there. Let's put some red in the black and just try that. Let's make it a warm black. And so here I'm taking Scarlet Lake, which is a very bright red. And I'm going to make, mix that in with the black. And now we're going to get a very, very warm, very warm black. And so I'm mixing solid black with the red. Again, now it's more of a warm feel. And since that's what we were taught in the school to make the black from colors so that they're co more colorful and not so matte. Basically that's what happens, it becomes very matte. But now this is just as dark as this, right? If you're looking at it from like the, where it's not washed out. But now watch when I take a little bit of more water on the side here and I bring it in and suddenly you see the lighter it gets, it's very, very warm, very, very warm. And it's still transparent and you have to realize that you need to use enough pigment to cover up the white. And yes, that is opaque. That is basically what opaque means, that you cannot see the white of the paper. But if you put it on in a way where it's very wet and it floats and it covers up the white, it still gives you granulation that you see. And it's not so put on so much without water that it's so thick that it's gouache. It's not that at all because it's very wet and it's floating, it's just covering up because you're getting so much um, pigment in there. And Holbein pigments are very um, granulated and very, very finely granulated so that if you use a lot of it and you float it in the water, see what I'm doing right now? It's covering up the paper, but there's all these granules of the pigment that it will just stay there and cover up the white and be black. But now this is a warm black and this is a cool black, all starting with the peach black, which is neither warm or cool. And so I, I highly recommend that you use, unless you want to use a um, cool black or a warm black to start out with because you're going more towards the warmth of the blue or of the black or warmer or cooler. So again, in the beginning I showed you that the neutral tint had a little bit more blue in it. The um, lamp black had a little bit more warmth into it. Um, the peach black was basically just like a gray black where it was just not to the cool or not to the warm. It was right in the middle there. And so then you can add the warm or cool to that. So that's what I recommend. Um, again, you can use the lamp black 
the ivory black. I think that's also a warmer black. You can even use sepia, which is more of a brown black. And so then you can add, you can still add warmth to that and you can still add cool to that because it is void of pretty much all the color when you're using solid black. So that's just my little tip for today. Um, use black. And if people say that they mix it, that's fine. Go ahead and mix it, but you're going to get there a lot faster and it's a lot easier for you as young students who are beginners. Beginners, I find that they get it. Um, when they've been, when I sometimes teach people who have been taught, like I have been taught to mix my blacks, it's hard to get this kind of richness to the, to the black and get some of the beautiful uh, wet into wet granulation that happens with black and that's what I really love about mixing a, a color into the black instead of mixing your blacks and trying to get to, to, to the black. I mean you you get to the black right away because that's the coming right out of the tube black and then what you do is you just mix in color to make it more of a warm cool uh, violet -y cool. That, see that's another thing you can put all kinds of all these colors violet blue violet, blue, or red, or yellow, and makes it more of a brown, basically. And so you're putting that, mixing it with your pure black, and you get colorful blacks. All right, so that's my little tip for today. Go ahead, use black, and if anybody said anything, just said, David Becker said you could use it. Um, you know, I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame for that, and uh, have fun, and make some really rich float your pigment black washes. All right, so until next time, or until some more, I, I come up with the next tip. And also come to my um, YouTube channel and watch my every every Tuesday, every <laughs> every Thursday evening at 630 Central Standard Time, I do a paint along where we paint along the same uh, picture. Um, we're all painting the same picture that I put out on a Tuesday in my newsletter. So if you want to get my newsletter, go to my website at beckerart.net. All right. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye bye.